How's it going everyone welcome back to next episode on how to create HTML and CSS. Now in this episode one of you requested of me to talk about something called position which is a styling we can apply to the elements inside the website and I want to mention that we use position in order to move around objects inside a website hence the name position and elements. So what I want to do is first of all I want to show you that I have a basic index page that has two sections inside the body tag. I have section one and then I have section two that has a basic div element inside of it that I'm going to move around inside the website so I can show you the effect of using position. Now position can be used in all sorts of elements, not just div elements. We can use it on text, images, basically everything we have inside uh, the HTML file, we can move around using position. So just to show what I have here, if we were to go inside the browser, you can see that I have section one, which has a 100% width inside the browser, and I have section two down here, which has 50% width inside the browser. And then the div box is going to be the blue box we have over here on the left side. So what I want to do is I want to move around this blue box using position. And I should mention, which is very important, that you should not use position inside the website unless you have a specific purpose in mind for using position. If you want to move an object to the left or the right or up and down, you should be using padding or margin. Okay, if you have a specific purpose in mind, then you need to use position because if I were to take an example where I have two images on top of each other, it, if I were to push the top image down on top of the other image by saying position and then move it down, then the image is going to not push down the bottom image with it, it's going to go on top of the bottom image. So it's very important that you keep this in mind because it can be a bit screwy when it comes to the design of the website because other elements are not going to be affected by using position on some elements. So the solution here, if you were to intendedly want to use position on an element to make it go on top of other elements, uh, you would also need to look into something called set index. Now set index, and again I'm getting a little bit off topic here, if you have two objects inside the website, let's say the top section and the below section here, if I want to move down the top section on top of the below section here, then whichever element is going to be on top is going to be the element that has the highest set index inside the style sheet. So if I were to go inside my style sheet, and again, just to show you before we get into position and go down to section one, I can give it a set index and set it to something like a thousand just to give it something, which means that if uh, section two has a set index of 500, then it's going to go below section one because it has a lower set index. So just want to push that out there that that's something you need to consider if you want to move around elements on purpose and move them on top of other elements. So now let's go ahead and get back to talking about position. When it comes to using position, we have a couple of different ones we can choose from. We have something called position relative, absolute, uh, fixed, and something called sticky, which is a new thing that we, we have inside CSS. And there's a couple of things we need to talk about when it comes to using sticky because it's actually a really cool feature uh, that we used to, we needed to use something called JavaScript, which is another programming language in order to get this sticky effect working using um, the elements inside the website. So. I think it's really cool they added this feature into CSS in order to get this working. We're going to get that uh, get to that at the end of this video here. So just hold on for a second. Um, now, if I want to move around the blue box, which right now has a class set to move me, then I can use something called position and set it to relative. Now, position relative is going to move the box compared to its relative location, which is where it is right now. So if I want to move it down, I need to move it away from a certain direction. So if I wanted to move it down, I need to move from the top, if that makes sense. So if I want to move it downwards, I need to define top because I want to move away from the top about 100 pixels. Then if I were to go back inside the website, refresh, you can see that the elements get pushed 100 pixels down uh, to the bottom of the page. Now again, we can do this to left, right, and bottom as well if you want to. Now, this is all fun and good, but let's go ahead and do something slightly more fun. Let's go ahead and move this element, like take it out from the entire website and put it on a different layer. 
and then just display it somewhere inside the window of the website. So if I want to go ahead and put it at the top of the website, even though it's an element inside uh, one of the sections down here, if I want to just take it out and put it at the top right corner of the website, then if I go inside the styling, I'm going to say position absolute, say top is going to be zero pixels, and right is going to be zero pixels as well. Then when I refresh the browser, you can see that we take it out from the entire website and place it on a top layer somewhere inside the browser. Now, if we were to say top 100 pixels, then it's not going to, again, like in the previous example, it's not going to move it relative to it where it is right now, which was over here in this uh, left side. It's going to move it uh, 100 pixels from the top of the website inside the browser here. Now, what if you want to do this but inside the container instead of the entire browser, which is sort of a weird thing if we, if we couldn't do it inside the container here. Now, if I wanted to be affected by the containers inside of, then I need to go to the container styling and add position to that as well. So I want to say position relative. And I'm using relative because if we were to just add relative without adding top, left, right, or bottom, it's not going to do anything. It's just going to give it the styling position relative without actually affecting the, uh, the element itself. So if we were to do this, save it, then you can see that it's going to go to the right side and 100 pixels from the top from the, <clears throat> from the containers inside of. My voice just cracked up there. Um, so this is how we can use position absolute. Now, we also have something called position fixed, which if we were to go back up to uh, move me, if I change it to fixed and save it, you can see that we get the exact same result, except for, it's, again, it's going to go to uh, the top right corner uh, instead of being affected by position relative, uh, which we added to the, the parent element. So this is not going to make it different when it comes to fixed inside this specific example here. Now, the cool thing about using fixed and the reason that so many people use it inside a website is because let's pretend for a second that we have a menu at the top of the website. But once you scroll down, the menu is going to disappear into nothingness at the top of the website. If I want the menu to follow me down the website, I need to add position fixed to it. Because right now, if we were to scroll, you can see that the element up here is going to stick with me as I'm scrolling up and down the website. So if we were to go ahead and make just a mini example here and change the width of this box, the blue box we have here, to 100%. And instead say top is going to be zero pixels, then also add a left and set it to zero. Save it, go inside the browser. You can see that now we have something that looks sort of like a navigation or like a menu inside a website. So when I scroll up and down, you can see it follows me. Now I should mention that you don't need to add position to all the elements inside the navigation or inside the elements that you're using position fixed on or any other sort of position on uh, because all the elements inside of it are just going to follow the element that you use position on because it's the parent element to all the elements inside of it. So it's just going to do the same thing. Now, one thing I want to mention about this navigation example is the fact that right now, if I were to have content inside the website, inside the, what do you call the top section here, and I wanted to not go be uh, below the navigation, because right now if I were to have text inside this box, uh, I can actually go ahead and show an example of it. If I were to go, first of all, to the index page and take the div, move it out from the section, because we don't need to have it in there, like so. And if I were to include text inside section one, and say here is text, then if I were to refresh the browser, we can't see the text inside the website because it's going to be underneath this specific element inside the website. So what I need to do is I need to go ahead and push down section one. If we were to go down to the styling here, the same height as my navigation. So I would say padding top and set it to 100 pixels because that's the height of my navigation. Save it, refresh the browser. And now we can see the text inside the browser here. So that's how I would actually display content inside the website, even though you have a sticking menu at the top of the website. Again, I got a bit off topic here, but I just wanted to show you since this is the most typical example use position fixed, you know, inside of. So 
The next example here, I'm just going to go ahead and remove the padding top and remove the text from inside the section. Actually, I'm just going to go ahead and go back to the previous, like so. Uh, the next example here, if we were to just refresh and again, delete the position fix styling. There we go. It's going to be something called position sticky. Now, sticky, like I said, is going to be an effect that we used to need to use JavaScript for in order to get working, which is the fact that when you have something inside the website, like a menu or something, once you start scrolling, if I want the navigation here to stick at the top, once I hit it with the top of the browser and keep following me down, then we can use something called position sticky. Now, if I were to go in and add it by saying position sticky, not static, sticky, there we go, and set it to top zero pixels, then you can see that once I start scrolling and it hits the bottom here, it's going to follow me down the page. Now, <clears throat> we can also go ahead and set this to a 100 pixels, just to give an example, save it, and then you can see it sticks at 100 pixels away from the top of the website. Now, one thing about using this specific uh, sticky method is that right now it's such a new feature inside CSS that not all browsers has full support for it just quite yet. We do have Safari, as a, at least as I'm making this video, Safari doesn't have the specific uh, styling uh, supported inside Safari. And it's only the position sticky is not supporting the relative and absolute, it does still well, still, it does support that, but it doesn't support sticky. So in order to get it to support sticky, we need to use something called a prefix, which we use inside CSS, in order to force certain browsers to apply this styling to them. So uh, what we can do until Safari gets full support for this styling is we can go ahead and add the prefix to the styling here. So I'm going to copy position sticky, and then I'm going to add the prefix in front of the value of this certain styling. So in front of sticky, I'm going to add a prefix for something called WebKit, which means that we're targeting certain browsers with WebKit. Uh, we can also target uh, Firefox using something called Mox, M-O, Sets, I think you say it in English. Uh, we can also target Opera, Opera. I'm not quite sure how to say the name of that browser, uh, by writing O instead of WebKit. So like that, and then mocks for uh, FileZilla. Um, but today, usually, we just use WebKit for most uh, stylings when we use prefixes. So if I were to use WebKit and do this by having both the WebKit and the regular sticky styling, we can also get it working inside Safari, just FYI. So this is not going to make a difference. It's still going to do the exact same thing inside the browser uh, as before. So this is how we can move around optics using position using CSS. And like I said, you should only use position if you have a specific purpose in mind. You shouldn't use it instead of using margins and paddings inside a website. It's very important you don't do this because it's going to mess up your design inside your website if you use position for everything that you want to move around inside the website. So just so you're aware of it, <laughs> okay? Um, so I hope you all enjoyed. I'll see you next time.